Hey everyone, Zach here. Today I'm going to talk through a new role that I've added to my utility collection I'm out on Galaxy for Let's Encrypt. So I have an older blog post where I walk through renewing certificates using the HTTP01 challenge. What I've gone ahead and done is adding support for the DNS challenge, specifically with the provider Cloudflare. Um, that's the provider I use, um, but I also created it as an example of how you can extend it yourself for other providers if you don't use Cloudflare. So the required variables for using this role, um, first, just the basics for Let's Encrypt. So your email, which is gonna be used for them to notify you when your certificate's about to expire. The domain name, so this is gonna be the CN for the certificate itself, which could be the base domain or the subdomain. Um, I have a separate variable for the base domain. That's specifically for the DNS integration, the DNS provider integration. So in my case, I'm using Cloudflare. I need to tell Cloudflare, hey, I'm working on the autodotes.com domain. Um, so that's what that's for. And then the Let's Encrypt challenge type. So of course that's gonna be HTTP01 or DNS01. Um, if you're not sure about the two challenges, take a look at Let's Encrypt's documentation, which is referenced in the blog post, uh, where they explain the two different challenge types. Today, of course, I'm focused on the DNS challenge type itself. And come in, there's some more role variables that you have the ability to override yourself. Um, I'll scroll down here. There's one that I'm going to use today. So let's encrypt configure nginx. That allows you to kind of use a bonus set of tasks that are in this role. Um, if you are happen to be using a nginx site configuration like I am, um, you can have this role at the end. Make sure that the site is pointing to the correct location for the SSL certificates that were just created, um, as well as go ahead and restart nginx um, to serve up the new certificates. I'll leave these directories alone for now. I don't recommend changing them unless you need to. Um, let's encrypt force renew. That's the other option that I'm gonna use today. Typically you wouldn't have to use these. I'm doing it because I want to force the renewal for a demo. But what would happen is if this role detects that the certificate isn't expiring within 30 days, it's gonna go ahead and bail out just because there's no point in renewing certificates for no reason. And the second piece here, since we're doing the DNS challenge, is we want to specify our DNS provider. Uh, I will note that as of right now, the only supported provider is Cloudflare. Um, if there was interest in me adding tasks for additional providers, I'd be happy to do so. Or if you yourself wanted to take this role um, and extend it for your provider, this would work for any provider that has an API. Uh, the way the DNS challenge works, which I'll explain in detail, um, just requires that integration to be there to go ahead and complete the challenge. And the, the second piece here is um, let's encrypt in Nginx enabled. So it looks like I actually, if I scroll up here, I have a duplicate. Let me, I will remove this variable here. This is no longer used. Um, this let's encrypt Nginx enabled is the, the flag that I'm using to determine whether or not to go ahead and run those, those Nginx steps. And the last piece is just pointing to the location of that Nginx site configuration file. Um, this is the standard that I use where I have my Nginx sites available and then I just use the domain name and .conf uh, and then it kind of assumes the recommended Nginx setup where you have sites available and you have sites enabled and within the sites enabled directory you create sim links to the sites available that you want to be live. So without further ado, let's actually dive in, get a quick idea. Um, I have an example here but let's hop over into my VS code where I'll show you how I'm going to be invoking the role today. So first thing here is I have um, my playbook name or my play name, which is just update SSL. I'm pointing at my Raspberry Pi, which is I'm using as my reverse proxy here. I am going to enable privilege escalation for this task, given that I'm working with some SSL certificates. And I'm going to turn off gather facts because I don't really care about facts about the reverse proxy. I'm just dealing with the Nginx configuration and manage and leveraging CertBot, which does exist on this proc this host itself. So that is one thing you want to keep in mind. You will need CertBot um, to be present on the, the box doing the work. When I invoke the role, I specify a few things that I mentioned earlier. So I've got my email here, my domain name, and my base domain name, specifying the challenge type, and then saying, yes, I want to enable the Nginx steps, and I want to force renew um, for the purposes of today's demo. So if I go back, um, right now you'll see it's at artifacts.autodotes.com. What we're going to use for the demo today is actually reports.autodotes.com. So if you're ever curious, this is my reporting where I just put static reports that I've created with roles. 
But if I look here, what I want to focus on is let's take a look at this certificate. And as you can see, it was issued on July 8th of this year. So uh, just a little over a month ago and it expires on October 6th. So now if I ran the role without force renew, the role would bail out because this cert isn't expiring within 30 days. So I'll turn, that's why I've turned it on in my demo um, playbook just to make sure that, you know, we get to see what happens. So let me hop back over into VS Code and I'll go ahead and kick off the role itself. Um, I'm gonna turn off verbosity here. So we'll let that, oh, let me exit out of that. I forgot to update this. I'm gonna change this to reports.autos.com. And now we'll let it run. In the meantime, I wanna show another way that you can check on your certificate without going into the browser. So you can always do curl reports.autos.com and dash vi. What you get here is some information um, about the certificate itself. So you'll see, I got that same information that I was viewing in the UI. So if you wanna check without actually going to a browser, if you're connected to a host um, that doesn't have you know, a browser installed, this is another way to achieve the same thing. And ideally, what we'll see is, um, if this playbook succeeds as expected, uh, we'll see that the new certificate will have been issued on um, you know, today, right? So Friday, August 16th, and it will expire um, three months from now. So while that's running, I think another thing to note is kind of how the DNS challenge works. So what's actually happening behind the scenes here is that if I dive into the code, let's go ahead and open up the file, give an idea of what's going on. I go into main.yaml, You'll see here, these are our steps checking the validity of the cert. So just using the community crypto collection um, to pull certificate info and determine whether or not it's valid and will be valid in the next 30 days. And of course we can bypass that altogether if we want to force renew and just go ahead to this generate cert task file. Let's go over there. And this is also helpful if you've never kind of navigated how a role works. I hope that you're able to follow along here. Basically, if, if you see an include task file, um, just hop over to that file and that's where Ansible will pick up. So we're also, again, we're still using community crypto collection to basically generate an account key and place it in a path, which we'll use later on when we go to create, generate the certificate itself. Um, I have a step here to go ahead and remove any existing SSL files that we're going to be replacing. And we then generate a private key um, for this certificate using, again, Community Crypto Collection. We generate a certificate signing request, which is what that CSR is. And then we begin the Let's Encrypt challenges. So this is us telling um, ACME, which is the protocol used in, during this process, we want to use the DNS challenge. Here are the, here's our certificate signing request, our account key, um, and some other metadata that's necessary here. And of course, we'll then put in the destination for um, the files that will be output here, right? So these are our .pem files. Um, so the, the single certificate and then also the full chain. So once we've done this, um, we actually haven't completed the challenge. We've just begun the Let's Encrypt challenge and told the Acme protocol, this is what we want to do. The next step is we have to implement the challenge. So in this particular case, we've got this variable let's encrypt challenge type. So depending on whether or not you have DNS01 or HTTP01, it's gonna to route to that particular task file. So in our case, we're doing DNS01. So we come back here, we've got this DNS01 task file. And for DNS, all we're really doing is creating a text record. So Ac Acme, when we go ahead and begin those challenge steps, gives me back information and says, create this text record with this value. Um, and so we're now using the Cloudflare DNS API to to go ahead and do that, right? So here's the record, um, and then here's the value that the ACME protocol is gonna be validating against. So as long as that, as long as when they query, you know, that particular record and get that value back, they know that I own the domain. So we've created that, so let's go back now. So we've implemented the challenge. Now we're gonna complete the challenge, which is, you know, very similar parameters to what you saw in the, the begin. 
Um, and now this is where Acme is going to go ahead and do that query. And if it's successful, it will issue those certificates and they will exist um, at those particular locations. And for DN DNS01, I actually created an additional task file for cleaning up. So it's basically that same create text record except for state absent, which you'll see is pretty common in Ansible. And it's going to go ahead and delete the text record um, because it's no longer needed. And it keeps me from filling up my DNS records with a bunch of text records that are just kind of a jobbled mess. The last piece, of course, is going to be to configure Nginx. Um, so of course, if you're not using Nginx, just go ahead and set this flag to false and don't worry about it. But if you are, this is where it goes in and sets up the Nginx site configuration um, and then restarts Nginx to make sure that the, the latest certificates are served. So we come back over here. It looks like it did uh, complete successfully. Um, what we're going to do now is let's see if when I curl, I get back some new dates. And exciting, it did work as expected. So you'll see now we've got a new start date, which is Friday, August 16th, and it now doesn't expire until November 14th. Uh, we can also verify that in the browser. Let's see if it refreshes as expected. Sometimes it, sometimes I find that it takes a second to refresh. Um, it caches the old certificate here. Um, let's see, but nope, look, we've got our new date here, Friday, August 16th. And of course, we've still got our site. We don't have a warning, right, that our SSL is invalid or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. Um, if you have any questions or you know, if you're using another DNS provider and aren't quite sure how to extend this role, feel free to drop a note in the comment and I can help you out. Thanks for watching.